welcome back to my channel and the city witch so today's video is on a squeamish subject so for those of you out there that are not interested in learning about how to use blood in magic and are not liking the idea of talking about how to harvest it where to get it from or menstrual blood then this probably isn't the video for you because i'm going to be talking about some pretty gross things um so apologies in advance guys i'm gonna do my best but if you're not interested or you're unsure scroll along and go to the next video okay so blood magic is a really old ancient form of magic that's been incorporated in the craft for a very long time now i've wanted to do this video for quite a while now guys because blood magic is something that i utilize in my personal craft it's not something that i use all the time only i'd say a couple of times a month but it is worth considering having in your craft because there's lots of unusual ways to unlock your magic your talent and to use your blood in your craft and as always, I'm not here to judge anybody, so there's probably people out there that aren't interested in this or think it's wrong to use blood and their magic, and that's fine, that's their path. But for those of you out there that are really interested and you're a bit more old school like me, and you're not um, limited by any structure of a certain path, then this is probably a really good video for you because it's going to give you ideas on how to use blood in your magic, things you might not have thought of, hopefully. And I'm hopefully going to give you all the right tools and tips and tricks for doing this safely and securely as well. So the first thing I want to talk about, guys, is how to harvest blood. Now, there are obviously two types of blood that you can use. You can use human or you can use animal. So the first one I'm going to talk about is animal blood. So the first thing I want to say to you guys is really think about the animal that you would like the blood to be from and really research the animal. So I'm not saying go out there and, you know, try and get blood from a crocodile or a kangaroo or, you know, something cute and fuzzy like a koala, because that's just not going to happen. I'm also just going to say loud and clear, guys, you do not, under any circumstances, need to kill or sacrifice an animal in your craft. That is not necessary at all. And depending where you are in the world will depend on what blood you have access to. So the first thing I would recommend is do your research. So look around for local butchers or places in your local area that sell meat uh, in a large, you know, large quantities. Go to them and ask them if they actually drain the meat themselves of the blood. And if they do, do they do they bin and destroy the blood? And if that's the case, could you buy some from them? And I would always offer to buy it because a lot of places, if they bin it, will just give it you for free, even though you said you're prepared to buy. And if you are prepared to buy and they like that idea because it gives them a bit of money, they'll only charge you really cheaply for it. Trust me, I've been doing this a while, guys. So research speak to your local butchers go and have chats with them and see if you're able to get hold of any of the blood if they'll sell it to you cheaply and when you do make an arrangement with them ask them what kind of bloods that they can get from different animals so here in the uk i know i can get hold of pig i know i can get hold of cow and um, sheep and sometimes i can get hold of horse blood as well which i know is a bit odd but sometimes that is that is possible as well um, I don't always utilise all those varieties, but I know they're the ones I can get hold of. So, so I research those animals, I figure out what they represent, what they mean, um, what the blood, that particular type of blood is going to be good for. So how you do that is you look up some books on animal magic, totems, and you would research uh, how sacred that animal is to certain deities. Some of the deities that you're particularly worshipping or following might like the idea of those animals being offered to them um, as a blood sacrifice so you can utilize that in your craft if you want to so think about that a little bit as well once you've done the research on the animal um, obviously it's about the power of the animal and quite often that's a live animal or representation of it so using the blood is like the very essence of that animal so you just want to take those qualities and apply it to the blood but maybe in a more um, sacrificial way so again I'm not advising you to go out and you know kill any animals at all I'm advising you to go and find a place that will supply you with the blood securely and safely from an animal that has already been killed or died of natural causes and all you're doing is asking for vials or containers of that blood so you can take it home and use it in your craft so once you've gathered the blood um, as I say you need to know how to safely store it so the first thing I'd say where possible is store it in glass um, you need to freeze it if possible. If you can't freeze it, you can keep it in the fridge. The fridge will make it last 
roughly two to three weeks. Freezing it will make it last a lot longer and you can obviously defrost it as and when you need to use it. I personally don't use either of those methods. I tend to have mine in my craft space on a shelf. I only take enough that I will use within a week. And if I don't use it in that time, I bin it. And the reason being is because blood coagulates. It doesn't coagulate quite as quickly if it's in a sealed container. But the more the air gets to it, the more likely it is to coagulate. And obviously the energies in the live cells in the blood die off over a certain length of time. Um, it survives, I think, I think it's up to three days in the air officially but it coagulates quite quickly so you need to keep that in mind guys so it's only live and active and usable for a certain length of time so three days if the air is getting to it and maybe up to a week if the air isn't getting to it so by freezing it or putting it in the fridge you're giving it fresh energy and you're keeping it alive and active for a lot longer which means it's usable for a lot longer so plan and map out how you want to lose your use the blood how you intend to use it in the rituals and of course when will you need it is going to be important so let's talk about human blood next so human blood is the most obvious one and it's the one a lot of people are probably going to be interested in the most in this video so there are two ways that you can gather blood one of them is a method that both men and women can use and the other one is just a method that women can use only sorry guys um, but women are a bit more versatile because we do have our moon blood so the first one i'm going to give you is for both men and women um to get that one out of the way so one of the disclaimers i want to say in this video guys is i am not advising anybody at all to go out and get themselves a knife and hack and slack at their wrists you do not under any circumstances need a knife and you do not need to cut yourself in any way to use blood in the craft that is not necessary and when you watch movies on the tv guys that do that it is just that it is a movie it is fictional that is not how we use blood in the craft it's not how we use blood in our spells and our magic and it's not how we harvest it okay so the easiest way for you guys out there to harvest blood for your magic is to use one of these. So this is a Lassiter. Now you can see the brand on there. This is a really handy, useful little trinket. So I bought this in a pack of 15 for three quid on eBay. So super cheap. Um, I got quite a few of them, I'd say 15 of them in a pack. They come in sealed, um, sterile little containers. I've unwrapped this one so I can show it you today. And they have this little bit on the top here so you would screw that off which would uh, ping the mechanism up inside you've got an end to it which um, <clears throat> has a spring so when this is done the spring is kind of coiled you hold this to your finger when it's off and you click that down really hard and sharply and it will stab you with a little prick and create a puncture in your finger that you can then harvest blood from. Now these are used by people that have diabetes and they need to check their blood on a regular basis for the sugar levels. So they usually have a little device, I'm sorry I don't know what the device is called, but they would put a spot of their blood on it after using one of these to prick it and that would read their blood and tell them how high or low their blood sugar is and then they can take precautions as needed so that's what these are for and they're not always supplied by the nhs and there's a lot of countries out there where they're not supplied freely at all so therefore these are available online to buy they are cheap as i say they are sterile they're also completely recyclable which is what i like about them and you can only use them once so once it's used it goes straight in the bin um, again, I, what I tend to do when I take it out of the packet is I keep that and then when I've used it, I pop it back in the packet so no one physically out there has to touch it and I usually tie it off and then I put it in my recycle and it can get recycled quite easily in my rubbish. So good for nature, really safe, really secure, sterile, so safe for you guys and literally it just creates one little prick on your finger. So I can almost hear you all out there going, oh, but one prick, is that enough? yes <laughs> you do not need any more than a single drop you know one or two drops in your spells guys is all it takes you don't need any more and if you are thinking about gathering your blood and using it on a re regular basis so you want like a vial full then you could um prick a number of fingers and gather a few drops from each finger every couple of days allowing your fingers to heal up and then do another one now i'm not recommending at all that you use this device anywhere near your veins um, that's not recommended. I'm not even sure it's possible because it's not sharp enough, I don't think, to get through it through that. Your fingers are quite soft skin, which is why they're easy to prick. Um, 
so that's why I say use a finger. Single drop, as I say, is enough. You don't need anything extra. And if you are doing a ritual or a spell, you can actually do this as part of that ritual working and harvest your blood freshly for that spell during the ritual. So it's an act in itself because you're sacrificing during the ritual. So it's a great magical act, guys. So I'm now going to talk about the bit where I recommend for women how to gather their blood. So if you're a guy, I would scroll along because <laughs> you probably don't need to watch this bit unless you really want to. Um, but how I gather my blood, guys, is with one of these. So this is what we call a menstrual cup or it's also called a moon cup. And this is uh, made out of silicone, so it's really squidgy. It's really soft. You can get them in various colours. Mine's purple. Um, I have two of these and I use them interchangeably when I'm on my time of the month and I will use one during the day and you know one during night and I boil them in between uses so they're clean and sanitary. These are extremely good for the environment guys. They are like I say made out of silicone. They're completely recyclable as well. They have this cute little end on them which is how you pull them out after they've been used and you use them for multiple times over the course of 10 years so these have a long life to them guys you don't have to use any sanitaries or tampons or panty liners or anything like that it eradicates the use of all of those and you can just use this so straight away helpful to the environment because you're not creating toxic biohazard waste you're not using all those materials that you know the government struggle to, to eradicate or destroy out there in the world and you're using something where you'd literally just gather up your blood and usually just tip it in the toilet and flush it away. So nice and easy, guys, and much more sanitary than using a sanitary towel. Now, there's lots and lots of stuff around these. I'm not going to go into a massive amount of detail because there are videos out there on YouTube, but I recommend that you all look up these. This is fantastic, guys. It's really comfy, really easy to, to pop inside. I don't have any accidents or anything, and I get to wear it for 12 hours, so it eradicates me changing my sanitary or my tampons on a regular basis all the time and also it gives me a really handy way in my craft to gather my blood without harming myself and i'm not someone who likes pain so where possible i don't want i don't want to create pain so if i don't have to use that and i can use that i'm gonna so that's why i recommend this for you ladies out there and i say really soft and squishy um really easy to use there are loads of videos on it please check them out and see what you think um but yeah that's how i gather mine once I've finished gathering my blood, um, I have it in a container like this. Now I'm about to show you my blood, guys, so please don't freak out. Um, so this is my blood. So that is all that came out of me this cycle. I know that you're thinking, God, that's not a lot. You mustn't bleed much. But actually, guys, this, when it gathers your blood, I never fill a full one of these. I usually fill maybe, you know, in it, on my heaviest day, almost a full cup. And then on my second day, it's a bit. But because you use sanitaries and it's made out of material, it spreads it and makes it look much worse than it is. They did research into this, guys, and you only bleed up to a certain amount and only free a certain amount of blood. So if you don't know the science behind it, I'd probably do some research. But honestly, that, that's pretty much what I get. And that is enough to last me for a week to do what I need to do. And then I can bin the rest or I sacrifice it outside. So... So that is my blood, guys. See, I store it in a container like that, and I usually have it in amongst my supplies as a tool I can use in my craft. If I do decide to gather my moon blood, I know that I'm planning to use it. I don't gather it otherwise because I don't need it. So I only use it as and when I need to, and only gather it as and when I need to as well. And I certainly don't use blood in all of my magic or all of my spells. I just use them in a few personal ones and sometimes in a client working, but that's extremely rare, guys, and only in extreme circumstances. And I'll explain about the types of spells that you can use blood in in a moment. So, as I say, best methods for storage are, if possible, put it inside a freezer or a fridge. The fridge is the most obvious one because, obviously, you can keep it for quite a long time in there. It's accessible and it's not actually been frozen. But if you're not going to use it straight away and you're storing it for a later purpose, then freezing it is the best choice. You can also use um, one of those sandwich boxes um, where you put cold 
frozen packs in it to keep it as like um, a sort of refrigerated compact. I've done that before and it does make them last a bit longer. But if you're going to store your blunt on a shelf like I do, it'll only last a week. But if you're going to store it in the fridge or freeze it, it's going to last you a lot longer. So just bear that in mind and decide which method is good for you. If you are not able to store your blood or people in the house that you may be sharing with might freak out if you do that um, or find it's not sanitary and they don't want it in the fridge with all the food, then I would certainly recommend getting yourself some kind of mini um, freezing container of some kind where it will keep everything cool. Um, so as I say, there are containers out there we can pop things in, it keeps things frozen and cold. There are sandwich boxes these days that have that special lining that become like freezers and you pop in something cold which will create that uh, vacuum of cold air. So that is another way to use it and you can easily store that out the way in your own room and it will make your blood last for at least two to three weeks before you need to bin it. So that is how you store and gather blood. So let's now talk about the various different methods on using blood in your magic. Now, I haven't used all of these guys, only some of them, and um, some of the ones that I do are really useful for my particular path and my craft. So you need to decide which ones that you feel you want to try and utilize in your craft and you know incorporate as best you can. So the first thing I'm going to talk to you about is using your blood for sigils or canvas painting. So using blood in paint has been utilised for a long time and not just by you know magical practitioners but by artists as well. There are a lot of famous artists out there that put their own blood into their paint and painted really famous pieces of art that are you know in galleries all around the world. Um, some artists nowadays have actually cut parts of their bodies off and actually use them in their arse. Not that I'm recommending anybody out there do that but that's some of the craziness that artists have done. So blood has been used for a long time to create pieces of art so there's no reason that as a witch we can't utilize that as well. So one of the ways that I personally have tried to use my blood is by drawing sigils and painting on canvases. So you can buy these days really cute little square canvases in shops for about 99p and you can paint some really nice sigils or designs on them and hang them above your altar. Now one of the things I did was I mixed a couple of drops of my blood into the paints and painted designs on the canvas and one of the reasons that you would do that is because you're linking yourself to the very image that you're creating. That's the first thing. The next thing is you're empowering it with your very essence and being, giving it life because you're offering it life. And the other thing is you're keeping it permanently alive with power. So this is why I like doing it for sigils. So sigils need to be charged and there's a couple of different types of sigils. Now there's a full video in my collection on how to create sigils and the different types. So I do recommend you watch that guys and I'll put the link below if you want. But the one, uh, one of the methods of creating a sigil that I talk about is you've got the destructive kinds where you um, create the sigil and you destroy it to free its energy. There is the um, long-term type of sigil and they're ones you need to recharge over and over before you're ready to destroy so you build upon its power. And then there's the psychological kind and they're ones that are there for pretty much forever. Um, but again, you need to charge them, um, but they have more of an impact on your mind energetically. So their energy is really slowly rather than quickly. So those last two kinds, the long term and the psychological, they need to be charged. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to charge it using all the elements. But as we're talking about blood, what you can do is you, when you design that sigil, you can mix into the paint or the ink or add a drop of your blood into it and draw the sigil and then because you've added your very blood to it you're linking that image to you and as you are alive and kicking and active you don't ever need to recharge that because your blood is doing that for you because it's constantly to you so you are the battery so that is another way to do a long-term psychological sigil without needing to charge it over and over again you can add a single drop of your blood into the mixture to draw the sigil or trace over it with your blood let it dry and then use that and because your blood is in it in the ink, in the canvas, and or in the sigil, as I say, you are the battery, so it's constantly empowered and constantly connected to you and constantly therefore have an effect on you. So if you are thinking about using that method, again, that sigil is only really gonna have an impact on you because it's connected to you with your blood. If you wanna create a long-term sigil for somebody else, you would need to incorporate their blood, so you're gonna need to use permission there. Um, if it wouldn't work using animal blood, you could draw the sigil using animal blood if you want as a type of sacrifice or to incorporate certain energy into the sigil, but it wouldn't keep it alive because the methods of collecting the blood that I've recommended, the animal's already 
deceased. So the animal's not alive, so therefore it's not got a battery source, so therefore the sigil is not long lasting because of that. So again, thinking long term, guys, about what you're going to want the sigil to be, what you want it to do, and how you want it to affect you. So that's one method, using your blood to make sigils and draw on canvases. So the other way that you can use blood that I have actually tried with great success is using it to do petitions. So again, I have a different video on petitions, guys, and I'll link it below if you want. So give that a watch. But uh, petitions are really interesting, easy ways to create power statements for your spells. And there are a number of different ways that you activate petitions and use them. But one of the various ones is you, when you get to the end of making your, your petition, you have to sign it. So you can either sign it with your signature, with a sigil of some kind, or you can um, add your blood to it if you want to. Now, what I tend to do is sign it in my blood because that is a really good way to empower the petition, especially if it's personal to me to give it that extra oomph and that power and it's also a way to sacrifice to the, the gods and the universe to bring this about because I'm serious because I've given some of my blood to this so it does show that you're very serious about what you're asking for and that you want it to manifest as quickly as possible and as you're feeding your very life force to it chances are it's going to manifest quicker than if you did it without the blood so that's another thought for you guys now you can do this with menstrual blood or uh, blood from your finger, it's up to you, it doesn't matter. And you can also do it with animal blood because you don't have to you don't have to do it with your blood for a petition it's a way to sacrifice and it's a way to seal certain energies into the petition so again try and match the animal with the actual petition um, based on what it is so if you're doing something for love for example um you know uh, dog's blood would be really good because they're super loyal so that would invoke commitment um long-term lasting energies in the relationship and obviously loyalty so thinking about the animal a little bit guys and again i'm not asking you to go out and sacrifice animals it's not necessary um, go and find regular ways to um, gather blood from a butcher or a safe source and do it that way a taxidermy place as well they tend to get hold of lots of animals and they drain the blood out of the animals in order to turn them into beautiful pieces of art if they don't use that blood and it's just going to go down the drain you could ask them for that blood from, and you might end up with some from some unusual animals so there's there's lots of ways to think outside the box and do this guys um, another, so I've, I've recommended there with the petitions that you actually you know use blood from your finger so when you break it you can actually just draw with your finger if you're using menstrual blood you might want to have a special paintbrush or a brush you keep to one side to actually draw another one is you can mix the inks um, with it as well so if you buy various files of coloured loose ink you can pour some into a pot mix a few drops of your blood in it and then use that to draw the uh, petition or the sigil or the design or the signature onto the paper so there's a couple of different methods to do the petition so one of the biggest ways that i like to use my blood is as a offering um to my gods and my deities and to the elements and energies that i work with so this is a type of sacrifice now the word sacrifice in the craft has a lot of really negative stigma around it but actually the word sacrifice doesn't mean that we are killing or murdering an animal in any way it means we're making a tribute to our deities in some way so we are letting go of something that means something to us and giving it to them as a, as a way to worship and honor them and thank them for their help and support their protection and their continued assistance so a really good way to build a connection between you your gods your energies is to continuously make offerings so i mentioned to you before that i gather my menstrual blood and i use it within a week and if i don't use it i get rid of it now what i do is i don't tip it down the drain if i can help it guys i often take it outside or you know do something with it where i'm sacrificing it to my deities the energies and giving it as a thank you and as it's by the end anyway i'm going to end up just getting rid of it that's the better way to get rid of it because i'm using it in a positive way i'm offering it to my gods and my energies and i'm using it as a sacrifice so that is why i say this is the best way to finish using your blood now different ways that you can do this so i don't know what deities you have out there guys but think logically about the element that deity represents so uh, one of my deities rules over the dead the underworld and um, she's quite a dark deity um, so she does accept blood in its raw form as an offering because it's the very essence of life and she rules over the dead so it's a good form of sacrifice for her so i will take that to a crossroads and i will sacrifice to her there 
or sometimes what I do is I dip pieces of apple in it and I pop it outside because apple is another one of her sacred things so by dipping the apple in the blood and giving it to the earth and making two forms of a sacrifice to her as well I don't necessarily have to go to a crossroads to do that I can do that anywhere but I often do it in my garden um if your deity is an earth deity they might appreciate you finding a lovely spot out in your garden or a secluded safe spot out somewhere in the in the world around you and burying some of your blood in the earth or giving it to a certain tree or something along those lines if your deity is someone that rules over oceans or lakes or rivers you might want to put a few drops in into the water you know if there's somebody you know rules over fire volcanoes deserts hot places like that you might want to think about putting a few drops on a piece of paper and burning it in a candle or in your cauldron offering it to your deity and you can write the name of your deity in blood as well as the offering so just think a little bit outside the box guys and i really like using my blood this way in my craft because i'm not using it for a spell specifically but it's a type of ritual practice and it's a sacrifice to the energies and it is a form of thank you as well and i do like to make sure that i thank and honor all of the energies i work with because it maintains balance it shows respect and it shows that i haven't forgotten them and it's also a two-way relationship so i don't want to continuously ask my deities for help and assistance and things and be that annoying friend that takes and takes and takes i want to be the one that also gives as well so every time i ask my deities for help there's some kind of offering on the altar it doesn't have to be my blood sometimes it's fruit sometimes it's some herbs or some rose petals roses are also a really good way to offer to your deities bunches of flowers are good as well you can also um carve sigils of offering and worship into candles and set them you know light them and set them to one side and they can be a form of offering so it's the essence of the fire that you're offering to the deity so there's a few forms of sacrifices that you can make it just depends on what works for you guys but blood is one of the ones that you can consider adding into that so um, so we've covered earth, we've covered deities and we've covered putting some drops on paper and burning it. So they're all good ways to off make offerings to your deities. So let's move on to the next one, shall we? So this isn't one I've tried, but it's one I know other practitioners have tried, which is why I've included it on my list to talk about. So you can consider using your blood to open your chakra points, but the main one is your third eye. So the idea is you would... Um, using obviously the lassiter you would prick your finger and then you put a spot on your forehead and you would go into a meditative state and you would concentrate on your third eye and you would allow the blood to ignite and open your third eye in a different way to if you did it for a meditative practice and it's supposed to be a very transcendent experience but I personally don't like the idea of putting my blood on my face <laughs> um, I, I, it just makes me feel a bit weird so it's not something I've personally tried guys but if you guys are gonna try it again just be safe secure and try and be as sanitary as possible so as soon as you are finished doing what you're doing make sure you've got a nice sterile sanitizer next to you that you can wipe it off with and then obviously dispose of it correctly and safely as well so that's all I'd say to you there guys now I haven't tried that one so I can't give you much of a description on you know what it's like to do that so we'll move on past it to the next one so the next one that you can consider doing is um, using your blood to empower spells now this is probably the thing that most people are watching this video for they want to know how do I use blood in my spells so there's a lot of different types of spells out there guys and to be honest there's probably a lot of types of spells that I would not ever use my blood in. I am very choosy about how I use my blood, when I use my blood and what I'm going to use my blood for. So using DNA in magic locks the spell to you in a very very strong spiritual way. But it's not something I think you should just throw around. I don't think you should just do every spell for yourself willy-nilly and put your blood in it because oh you know it's a strong magical ingredient i think you should be really selective about how you choose to use your blood and again this is just my personal advice guys but being selective about your spells anyway is a good idea and not going to magic for every little thing that goes wrong in your life is also a good idea so don't expect you guys to just use magic for everything to fix everything in your lives but if you are considering using blood in your spells i think the spell should be really thought about and you should really consider the impact of using the blood in a spell so ways that you can consider using blood in spells that i have actually done 
So the first one is to anoint your candles. So often we talk about anointing candles by using moon water or essential oils or oil mixes. You can also use your blood guys. You don't have to use any oils or the moon water if you don't want to. And actually you can mix a couple of drops in moon water and use a combination of both of those if you like. And the same with essential oils. You could use essential oils in a little mix in a bowl. You could use um, oils that are already designed. So you can buy oils online specifically for protection and love and so on and so forth. So whatever you're using the spell for, you could use a drop of your blood in that. Once you've, don't do it in the bottle, the container, because you're tainting that with your blood forever. I would always pour it into a little container and then put a drop of my blood in that and then anoint the candle afterwards and I would probably give it a little bit of a stir as well making sure the blood's good and mixed in there as well so it's not as obvious when you're um, doing your spell that your blood is in there and then you can obviously anoint your candle with that and then if you want to you can dress the candle with your herbs now another thing to consider if you don't want to actually put the blood on the candle and get your fingers all messy with it you can actually choose to make a paste instead so the easy way to make a paste is you would put a couple of drops of blood into a you know a little bowl of some kind mix in a few herbs and then mix it up with maybe a brush and that can form a paste you can also use sticky substances to do that word so if you're using um, your blood in some kind of a love spell honey is good for this because it's sticky so it might help you make a paste really easily if you're trying to use um, a spell to spice things up or push someone away mustard is really good for that so you could use a um, mustard paste rather than the actual you know squirty kind and then again mix your blood into that you can use sugars as well. Sugars are really good for creating pastes. Um, so yeah, so think outside the box a little bit, guys, based on what it is that you're trying to do. If you're trying to, you know, really like fire on someone's ass or get rid of them, then Tabasco sauce is really good. And again, that can be quite sticky, so you can mix your blood in that as well. So just thinking outside the box, make yourself a paste with all the right ingredients and all the right herbs, and you can use the paste in your spells as well. Whether you want to dress your candles or place it around the base of the candle or paint over a picture of someone, it's completely up to you how you want to use that paste. It's just one of the things that you can use as a tool in your craft. Another one is you can um, add a couple of drops of the blood into bath water. Now again this isn't one that I have tried personally but all you need for this is no more than two or three drops in the entire bath and I know that doesn't sound like a lot but think of it like essential oils you know one drop is super powerful so you really don't need more than a couple of drops and it's done. You can add all of the regular things into your bath you know your bath bombs your salts your bubble bath all of that can go in as normal give it a good stir and step in and again it might not be something that you guys are really interested in trying and some of you might be thinking that sounds really gross putting your blood in your bath and bathing in it but actually there's a lot of research out there about the regenerative quality can i say that right regenerative ugh, I don't, i'm not saying it right guys regenerative there we go regenerative qualities of blood so blood especially menstrual blood has stem cells inside it and there's been a lot of research into stem cell um, uses and if you if you look that I mean I've read hundreds of reports online of how blood has been used and there was this particular research facility um, I think it was in Russia it wasn't over here and they got together um, a group of um, married couples and specifically they were looking for um, couples where the man had problems so that ranged from cancer to baldness all sorts of things and then what they did was every time that woman would have her um, moon cycle of her blood they would gather that up so they wouldn't get rid of it they were gathering it and they were doing um, experiments on it and they were researching various different ways to see if the blood can aid various different ailments they did all sorts of crazy stuff. I mean, the, the bald guy, for example, they rubbed it into his head and he grew a full set of hair. Um, the guy who had cancer, I mean, apparently they near enough cured him. Now, the interesting thing about this story that I found was the research centre right after they cured cancer was shut down and destroyed and all the people were silenced. So that's, that tells me that I think we've been able to cure cancer as a human race for a very long time and people don't want us to know that if that's true that's that's a massive global conspiracy and it's disgusting and shocking but that's my personal belief on it after i read the story 
There are lots of different websites out there that talk about these kinds of things where lots of government officials, lots of countries have done research into menstrual blood and blood in general and stem cell research. So have a look for yourselves. But bathing in blood is, is a really symbolic act. And as the, the cells in blood are really regenerative, if you've got scars or wrinkles or your, your skin isn't particularly very good, the blood is supposed to be really helpful for that. So, I mean, there's reasons why there's, you know, stories about crazy people out there who bathed in blood and killed the servants donkeys years ago and bathed in the blood, kept keeping them young forever. You know, there's reasons why those things were about, and it's because it actually happened, guys. So I'm not telling you to go out and fill your bathtub with lots of blood from random strangers. I'm not, please don't do that. <laughs> um, but a couple of drops in your bath, um, with some salts and some bubble bath, you won't even know it's there. And it's it's supposed to be really regenerative, so it's give it a go. And if you suffer with any medical conditions like I do, it may be worth just giving it a go and see how it helps you guys. It might help, it might not. Big honor to try. <laughs> so, so that's one. Um, so another type of method of using your blood in spells is for binding spells. So binding spells are used for lots and lots of different things, ranging from binding a lover to you all the way to binding someone's energy from harming you. So binding spells are quite versatile and written in lots of different ways. Now I have a number of different binding spells based on you know whatever I want to use it for and I have one which is really easy to manipulate and change into whatever I need it for. So it's kind of like a base format. And binding spells is an obvious one that you hear a lot about in, you know, occult literature and in movies and TV shows about how people use blood in magic. Now, I want to give a disclaimer here again, guys, that using blood in magic is a really serious act and shouldn't be taken lightly. But in particular, if you're going to be using blood in binding spells, please be really selective and really careful. If you choose to use your blood in a binding spell, just know that it's impossible to undo it. You can't cast a spell or say, oh, I undo this. You can't do that. If you're tag walking that person specifically to your very being, your life force. And unless one of you in that connection dies, that's going to last for as long as you're alive. So you need to know that you're the person you're binding yourself to is someone you want to be bound to, that you trust with your life and that you know isn't going to betray you in any way because you can't get rid of them. You're stuck with them forever. On some level, psychologically, physically, spiritually, emotionally, you are connected to that person forever. So you need to make sure that you are sure you want to bind yourself to them. And if you're not sure, don't do it. That's my advice. Um... So for those out there in particular that are considering binding their, their boyfriends, their ex-boyfriends or, or girlfriends or wives to them and using this in some kind of a love ritual, my advice is don't do it. I would never ever use my blood in any kind of a ritual working where I'm binding a lover to me in any way because... If you split up, and let's face it, you know, you might think you are, are strong and you're above it all, but actually... A lot of people come to me for, you know, return to me spells or to get rid of the, the husbands or wives because they don't want to be with them anymore. And if you bind yourself to them in some kind of magical way, especially using your blood, you're going to be stuck with them. And that person could go very, very crazy as well on the thought of just losing you because on some level they're bound to you, but they might not understand it because you've used the, your blood on them. So... Please be super careful and really selective where you use your blood. And my advice is don't use your blood in binding rituals, especially not loved ones. If you're going to use your blood to bind anybody, I think the best course of action is when you're binding them to not be able to hurt you anymore. That you're binding them so strongly with your DNA that you're that serious about this spell and about backing off from you that you've put your own blood into it. You've sacrificed a piece of yourself to keep them away from you. That's a bit different to using something in love. So as I say, um, blood magic cannot be undone. So be really selective about where and when you use it and just be really careful, be really sanitary guys. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say to you guys. Um, so I hope I've given you some tools and some ideas on how to actually utilize what I'm saying to you guys and I hope that you are all safe and secure and that you don't you know hack and slash at yourselves or sacrifice any little fuzzy animals please don't do that um be sensible be safe and I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did give me that thumbs up click the bell because YouTube is terrible at telling you when I have a video coming out 
and if you'd like to support me the easiest way to do that is to give me a thumbs up and there are various different social media channels that you can support me on as well all the information is in the description i have social media on instagram twitter facebook and patreon and you can follow me or subscribe to me on all of those things and thank you in advance for anybody who does choose to support me on patreon i do appreciate it guys thank you very much and yeah thanks for watching as always good to each other i'll see you soon blessed be